Hello YouTube, the Mall Maniac here. I'm formerly known as American Pile Lots Out. Hope everyone's doing well. Gave myself a fresh shave. I'm in desperate need of a haircut as always. Um, <sighs> this is a top five, or not necessarily a top five, but um, a good baseline of winter perfumes for <clears throat> men, women, everyone for 2022. I'm going to be uh, marketing this video as the best top as um the top five or possibly the best fragrances for winter of 2022, but it doesn't really matter. These are great fragrances during the fall, winter, summer, spring months. Even though I wouldn't recommend wearing any of these in spring, uh, you could you definitely could. You can wear fragrances any season, any occasion, any time you'd like to, um, regardless of what you identify as, what you like to sleep with, um, what body parts you were born with, who you're around, um, whether you're at a formal setting, informal setting, church, and I keep, you know, glancing over these fragrances, um, church, a funeral, celebration of life is the modern day term for it, uh, so on and so forth. I could care less where you wear these fragrances at, but these are five high quality fragrances that <clears throat> I would recommend someone for winter. And uh, to start it off, um, Chanel Coco, an absolutely beautiful, sexy fragrance. Mm, beautiful, musky, woody, ambery, floral, fruity fragrance. Um, a perfect Sheepra that fits all the qualities, it check marks everything. Um, Ladies, if you're not wearing this, you need to be wearing this. Men, if you're not wearing this, you need to be wearing this. A beautiful aldehydic ambergrisic, is that a word? Ambergrisic uh, fragrance that um, comes to no surprise as being um, one of the greatest perfumes ever created. Very dark, very bold, very sinister, and very sexual at the same time. Um, next, we have Yadigan by the French house Caron. This is a 1998 bottle. Uh, I'll be doing a comparison video between a new, newer formula, a new, the newest formulation and this bottle. Um, believe it or not, there are some huge differences, and uh, I think it goes to show that it, it's worth owning uh, every iteration of a fragrance that you, you know, financially can. This is a dark, deep, I think I, you should be noticing a um, a trend here, woody, borderlining, pissy, animalic, sexy fragrance, sweet, syrupy. Um, there's a, a syrupy, not necessarily body odor, but a, a syrupy, musky, musty note to it as well. And, and I say musky and musty, musty, because this is definitely an older fragrance, uh, it's like walking into my great grandparents' house. Uh, when I was young, uh, I was blessed enough to uh, meet my great grandparents, and wow, just I remember walking in their house and smelling it because it does smell old. This is a very old fragrance. Um, it smells like varnish. If you've ever smelt uh, varnish on furniture or just something old in general, and old and in, inside an old car, just absolutely. Gorgeous, believe it or not, it's gorgeous. I love wearing it on the skin. Heavy patchouli, heavy notes, just a very heavy, dense fragrance, just like the juice. Um, the fragrance smells just like this juice. It's ambery, it has some incense in here. Florals, carnation, heavy carnation notes. Um, just an absolute amazing fragrance to wear. I was talking with uh, some some people that are in the fragrance community, and they said in 1978, people even said that this smell dated in 1978. So you just got to take that into consideration. Mm, sorry. Just got out of the shower, by the way. Trying to keep this video a little bit short. <clears throat> Up next, we have Ombre Nomad by Louis Vuitton. Um, possibly the best rose oud out of LVMH. This blows Santal Pau Rosa out of the water. It blows Santal Royale. It ro blows Oud Essential out of the water. Uh, Oud Isbahan. It's better than Oud Palau. Uh, 
possibly the best fragrance I have ever smelled from LVMH, honestly. I think that um, Jacques Cavalier, uh, Cavalier, 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 um, is being wasted at this house. Me and Rudy both share that same testament. Finally got me a full bottle. Um, I burned through a 2ml sample. Uh, I almost burnt through a 15ml sample. Um, and then I have two 2ml samples from this and I've been wearing it and eating it up. Uh, and I've wore this bottle a couple of times, and, and to be honest with you, I know that I'll be having to make a trip to the Louis Vuitton store um, to get this one refilled. I just know I will. Um, I could have easily put um, Nuit de Faux on this list, and um, probably next year I'll be putting Nuit de Faux on this list, but I'm not going to mention a fragrance that I don't have in my collection, even though I have smelled it. Um, and I might do some recommendation videos of fragrances I haven't smelt, but, or I have smelt, but I don't own. Uh, but I'm not going to, you know, list a fragrance on a list that I don't own and I can't necessarily show you the bottle of. Uh, that being said, it is somewhat hypocritical because I will be doing a review on uh, Slumber House Bucket and doing another Slumber House rant video. I, you know, I thought about not doing any rant videos on this channel, but... It's got to be done. Up next, um, you see, you already seen the bottle, so it's um, MXXX from Iris Perfumes. Beautiful French house, Antoine Lee and some lady, I forgot. So many notes in here, so many notes, but the only two notes you need to worry about is ambergris and vanilla. Real ambergris tincture. Is it tincture? Yeah. Real ambergris tincture, real vanilla absolute masterpiece every single facet of ambergris in here the, probably the best ambergris fragrance um it is limited and luckily no one actually knows about this house so it hasn't sold out yet um but if you can please get your uh, nose on this sample decant i don't do samples or decants because i'm greedy and i don't like to um, share my stuff really uh, it's kind of a douchebag move from me but oh well and last but certainly not least probably the even though there's some complete bangers, absolute monster, beastly fragrances in here that's going to push through the winter months, the winter cold. Um, and some of these are going to get you compliments. Some of these are extremely sexy. Um, especially Ombre Nomad and Coco. Um, MXX. MXXX. It is very, it's beautiful, but you, you know, Ambergris is kind of an acquired taste. And this one is probably the most sexy of them all. Um... I personally think it is. I think this is a beautiful fragrance. It's one of the building blocks for one of my favorite fragrances um, in the world, which is the Moon from Frederick Mall. And this is a Frederick Mall fragrance. This is Rose uh, Tonnerre. Tonnerre. Um, uh, luckily, this was not reformulated. Um, this is formerly known as Un Rose. Un Rose is a beautiful fragrance. I'm just going to call this Un Rose because it's, Un Rose is so much easier to say than Rose Tonnerre. Um, Tonnerre. The batch code is the same. The formula code is the same. Uh, just this change up of names. Uh, perfumer is Edouard Fletcher. Absolutely wonderful fragrance. Very sexy. Went on a date with my girlfriend last night. And absolutely beautiful she loved it. I loved it. Wine, rose, that that classic rose absolute that Frederick Mall is famous for. <sighs> Absolutely to die for. Patchouli, sexy notes, some chocolate. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Sexy fragrance winter fragrance has the has the balls has the might has the power to push through the darkest winter months so that's my top five um this is in the order in which i presented them in the video is coco chanel the eau de parfum Yadigan, which is an eau de toilette. It always has been and probably always will be an eau de toilette at uh, the 1998 version bottle. Um, Ombre Nomad by Louis Vuitton. Eris MXXX. And um, 
Un Rose slash Rose Tonneray by Frederick Mall. Hope everyone enjoyed this video. Um, have a wonderful day.